The segment you're about to watch originally appeared in my upload, The Career and Downfall of Nicholas Nicky Black Grancio, which I released in the summer of 2022. If you would like the full story, I will link that to the description of this video. But for those who want to get right to the point, I felt it would be worth it just to upload this part of that video. What you're about to watch is footage I filmed on the streets of Gravesend, Brooklyn, where I run down the exact events that happened on January 7th, 1992, the death of Nikki Black, as told by former Colombo mobster Larry Mazza. I hope you enjoy this upload. All right, everybody. We are in Graves and Brooklyn. And if you watched the little part before this, well, you know why we're here. Because we're heading to the spot where in 1992, January 7th to be exact, 1992, Nicholas, Nikki Black, Grancio is shot dead. Now that happens up the block from a social club at 2284 McDonald Avenue. And according to the website Cosa Nostra News, which I'll link to this, that social club was apparently called the Fifth Corner Club under the control of Nikki Black. A lot of noise. Let's see what's going on over here. All right. Let's walk down McDonald Avenue for a little bit. Let's get a sense of the neighborhood. Uh, and then we will come back to this, uh, kind of to this spot we're at already. So this is Avenue U right here. If you look up this incident on uh, newspaper articles or wherever, it always says the intersection of Avenue U and McDonald Avenue. Well, that's not exactly true. Um, it's close enough, but it's not exactly true. If you wanted to really get the spot, you'd have to investigate a little more. That's what I did. But for now, let's make our way back to where we came from. I think it's a little less noisy, although maybe not. We're not going too far. We're gonna be looking at the property across the street, ladies and gentlemen, if you see where it says dry cleaners, right over there in that corner. That's the address of 2284 McDonald Avenue. And you know, it's not clear whether it was that corner or the address on the side, which we'll go to now, had the 2284 address as well. So it could have been on the side there in the cut, the actual club, or it could have been on the corner. Let's go across the street and take a better look at it.
2284. This is the side address I was just speaking of. So let's get to uh, let's get to the in-depth details now. Okay. So on that day of January seventh, ninety-two, as many of you know, uh, especially since uh, if you listen to the piece before this, you had Scarpa. Mazza and Del Masto cruising around this neighborhood. Now they were parked over here. This is called Village Road, right here, Village Road North. And they're scoping out this spot. Now it's not clear to me if they were on the other side of Village Road, over there where we came from or right here on this side, scoping it out. However, in the book, Larry goes into a little more details. He says that they are scoping out the club, which is on the corner there. And they see Nikki Black's Toyota Land Cruiser. Now he makes mention of him stopping across the street at a car service. So I um, imagine that if they were parked on this side, they would get a clear view of that. On the other side, they might not have gotten the best view of that, but there was a car service over there located at 2279 McDonald Avenue. And I'm gonna put a picture of that car service up. I'll zoom in. If you see where that worker is across the street, next door to that, where that gate is down, that's where the car service was. And I'm gonna put a picture of that up. So they spot the car. He apparently drives across the street to the car service and stops there for a minute. Apparently he had a piece of that car service. So he goes this way and they're gonna pull up and they're gonna follow him. He makes the left here on McDonald. So he makes the left here on McDonald Avenue and they're trailing behind him. As you know, they got a police siren in the front they got their coffees up on there and they're trying to look like uh, law enforcement, basically. So to uh, Avenue U and make a left. So as Mazza talks about, they make a left over here in Avenue U. He also mentioned something else um when he makes the left here that he goes all the way down this way past what is lake street over here and mazza thinks that he's going to turn over here on lake street but what happens is he keeps going so they keep driving their cars this way right driving driving and what's gonna happen is they're gonna pass this triangle right here. Where I'm walking right now is a triangle. It's called Lady Moody Square. It's not exactly a square though, it's a triangle. So they come here and they're gonna wrap around this triangle and make this left around here. First, let's look at this memorial, Gravesend Veterans Memorial, right here. Very nice. So they're gonna come this way. And they're going to make this left around this triangle. And they're gonna end up back on this side to where they initially saw Nikki Black in his Toyota Land Cruiser. Now, before this happened, in front of the club up ahead at 2284 that we visited. About a month before this happened, there was another incident over here. Now, Nikki Black's nephew, Joe Tolino, who was in the Land Cruiser that night, he got shot. He's gonna get injured in a shootout, right? In front of this club down here. And Genovese mobster, 
Gaetano Motto, 78 years old, would become a casualty in this Colombo War. Wrong place at the wrong time. Should not have been hanging around here during a war, which is what apparently all the families had warned them about. So he became a casualty of this war. 78 year old Gaetano Amato and Joe Tolino is shot and injured. And then fast forward to January 7th. When they come around this triangle, after following Nikki Black from McDonald, he's coming back around once again to where he was. And then we're gonna show you exactly where that happened. And I'm gonna put up a photo too, so you guys can get an idea. So usually when, oh, look at these abandoned houses here. Usually when you see the photo of the, the hit, it's a night photo, I'll put that photo up now. It's a night photo. That's the most popular image used. And uh, there's a detective looking in the car, who I believe is Detective Joe Coffey. I'm pretty sure that's Joe Coffey. At that point, he would have been exclusively working for the, um, for the Organized Crime Control Bureau. That was kind of his gig. So I'm pretty sure that's who that is. And there's a very graphic photo of the way Nikki Black looked after the shooting. I'm not going to put it up because I don't want to get demonetized. Who knows? But I want you to look this way. Now, I'm going to put up a photo, a daytime photo, which I assume would have been the first photo taken when the blue and white cops came here before, like the organized crime organized crime uh, officers got here and everything else. And I'm gonna show you a photo taken from this direction. And I want you to look all the way down there at that corner building. You could see that building on the corner and you could see to the left how that building next to it kind of protrudes out. So they're not exactly lined up together. Right back there where that truck is. And I'm gonna put the photo up of the scene and you can tell based on the photo that I put up that this was the spot that Nikki Black pulled over at with his nephew Joe Tolino in the passenger seat Greg Scarpa Larry Mazza and Damasto would pull up next to him right here Scarpa becoming clumsy with AIDS, his body sick and ravaged, would accidentally release the clips from his gun, leaving Mazza to do the job. He would pull out his shotgun after pulling up right here and according to what he says, he would place the shotgun within six inches of Nikki Black's head because he had not looked at them in the car. And the popular notion is that Nikki Black, along with his nephew Joseph Tolino, had assumed they were in fact cops and decided they were just gonna look straight. Maybe the cops wouldn't mess with them. And if they did, you know, they'd just pretend that they don't see him. So they would pull up here. Nikki Matt, <clears throat> Nikki Grancio would be here. Mazza would essentially pull the trigger of the shotgun and blast out the back of his head. Right here. On Lake Road North. Right here. And I'll put that photo up again that I put up before. Sorry to get nerdy with the locations and the photos. I always like to pinpoint exactly where these things happened. So right here on Lake Road North by the social club. Look at 2284 Donald Avenue. It's 
get a look at the whole block. So I know this is good for people, you know, in other states, especially people around the world that want to see these locations because they hear about these hits and they hear about this organized crime stuff. So, you know, if I could bring you to these spots and kind of show you the neighborhood and show you where these things happen, you know, to me, that's awesome. I hope you have enjoyed this so far. Let's get another look at the area. Right over there is Avenue U. Once again, if you look in the papers, it often says that this happened at the intersection of McDonald Avenue and Avenue U. Not exactly true, but close enough. It happened right here. Right here. Powerful Teamsters, Labor Racketeer, Nicholas, Nicky Black, Grant Chio, would lose his life right here, January 7th, 1992 during the Colombo War. Now, while we're here, let's get a bonus location. And we're gonna have to go this way to get that location. Graves and Brooklyn. All right, so. Just right over here, on the corner here, we'll go show you a little bonus spot. Since we're here, might as well, right? All right, hope you guys have enjoyed this so far. Hope you enjoyed the um, little documentary beforehand, learning about uh, Local 707 and all of Nikki Black's doings. He's not often discussed. I mean, this is like the part of his story that is discussed and like, you know, short clips of Mazza or whoever, I think Sammy spoke about it, but who was he exactly? It's not something that's often discussed. Um, thankfully, I was able to do so for you. Get a little bit about what he was doing, what he was involved in, and ultimately why he came to his demise. All right, so let's go this way over here to the address of 246 Avenue U. Right here, 246 Avenue U, where it says Center for Paralegal Services. It's actually uh, accounts for both of these addresses, right here. This is the location of the former Mother Cabrini Social Club, which was Frank Lino Social Club, the Banana Mobster right here in Gravesend. Uh, you know, you would have had guys like Tommy Karate Patera hanging out here for sure at that time. He was under Lino at one point, so he would have been hanging out here. I know you guys definitely like to hear about him. And also, when the night that uh, Eddie Lino was killed, it's often said that he leaves a social club. Now in the book, by Tommy Dades and Becky Young about the Mafia cops. They talk about him leaving the Mother Cabrini Social Club, which would have been right here. And in about 15 or 20 minutes or so, Eddie Lino would take his last breath on the side of Shore Parkway when the Mafia cops, Louis Epolito and Stephen Caracappa executed him. So just a bonus footage here, 246 Avenue U, former site of the Mother Cabrini Social Club, Frankie Lino Social Club. Now on that same uh, site that I referenced before, Cosa Nostra News, they had claimed that a source told them that at the time that Nikki Black was murdered up the block where I just showed you, he was renting this place out and using this as a social club as well. Uh, I cannot verify how true that is. They're getting that from a source. So I thought I would just um, put that little information in there for you. All right, so let's get a look over here one more time. We'll go this way. We'll get one more view of the block and then we'll call it a day. Hope everybody had fun. 
Mr. Softy's hanging out. He's right here. So let's get one more look at Lake Road. All right, it was a pleasure to bring everybody here. Show you where this event took place. I hope everybody has a great week. Um, please remember to like, subscribe. You can hit the notification bell if you want to get notified immediately when I upload something. If you want to donate to the channel, there is a cash app my profile you could also send what's called a super thanks which is something if you're watching this video after it premieres you'll see that by the description of course donations are not required to watch my channel if you sub if you like i will love you just the same so everybody have a great week